October is Mental Health Month. Now, imagine getting a diagnosis that you've developed diabetes. Making day-to-day -day changes in your life can be emotionally draining. For those living with the disease, sometimes it's a feeling of hopelessness and burnout that can come with managing this chronic condition. Today, we're going to discuss the link between diabetes and depression with the co-founder and director of the Clinical Education at the Behavioral Diabetes Institute, Dr. Susan Guzman, and from Abbott's Diabetes Care, Megan O'Neill. Ladies, so good to talk with you both today. Thank you for having us. Megan, let me start with you. What are some common symptoms of diabetes? So diabetes is a complex chronic condition, and it is really boiled down to the way that the, the body is managing glucose levels. And glucose is the main source of fuel for all of the cells. So this can go in a, into a spectrum. Oftentimes there can be no symptoms. So it's important to get regular assessments with your healthcare professional to monitor the glucose levels. Um, some of the symptoms that can develop in a more severe sense could be blurry vision, being excessively thirsty or urinating frequently, being very hungry and still losing weight, as well as a sense of overall fatigue. So, Megan, you mentioned that there are ways that people living with diabetes can monitor and track their condition. What are those ways? So diabetes is a self-management disease, and it is really important to know where your glucose levels are so that you can best manage and keep them as in the goals as possible. And that is key to leading that happy, full, successful, healthy life. So some of the ways to monitor now, um, it doesn't have to be painful or cumbersome anymore. And at Abbott Diabetes Care, we have been committed to bringing technology to advance the ways to monitor. We now have continuous glucose monitoring. And what this means is that someone can wear a sensor and get those glucose levels continuously streaming to a device such as their smartphone and know where they're at day and night. Um, and know what better to do about it and really take control of their diabetes. So, Dr. Guzman, what is the difference between, say, diabetes distress and clinical depression? Well, managing diabetes is a big job, and over time that can take a t an emotional toll, and we call these tough thoughts and feelings that go with diabetes, diabetes distress. Whereas depression reflects more hopelessness and powerlessness about life in general. We know that both can happen in people with diabetes, but diabetes distress is far more common, where four in 10 people who have diabetes will report elevated diabetes distress. And the important thing to know is that both are treatable. So if someone's dealing with diabetes distress, are there indicators they should look for or know? First, it's important to always check in with yourself as to how you're feeling about managing uh, diabetes and an overall sense of those emotional reactions to it. Uh, there are helpful tools out there as well. DiabetesDistress.org has a lot of information that people can go to to learn as well as take some free online self-assessments to help them understand if they may be having diabetes distress. And Dr. Guzman, I think now more than ever, are there tips that you have just simply for managing our mental health? Well, I think the first thing to know is that if you're struggling, you're not alone. When people are having whether it's distress or depression or any other mental health condition, it can be a very lonely experience. So it's important to know you're not alone. And if you have diabetes, to recognize you don't have to be perfect to, to, to live a long and healthy life with diabetes, but you do need to take some action. And so taking some action that actually helps you feel more empowered and hopeful can really help. And you can learn more about which actions might help you the most at freestylelibre.us. It's a resource to learn more about diabetes. Well, ladies, thank you so much today for your time. Clearly a topic that is important, not just in the month of October for Mental Health Awareness Month, but a lot of folks out there living with this condition. And it sounds to me like if you just uh, take care of yourself and take care of your mental health, it's certainly very manageable. Thank you very much.